Yeah, Jens, Jens, are you doing the intro or am I doing the intro? I, d- I don't know. I don't we're, know either. We're, like, we're I, doing I, I so un- terribly. We're not doing it very well is what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me just, let, let's just try like one like serious intro. Hey, welcome to the Icarus Idea. So great that you're listening in to the first episode of our second season. First of all, we got two new hosts. Second, instead of only one episode each month, we will be putting out two episodes each month. Now, what that means is that there will be coming twice as much knowledge and twice as many episodes for the same price as last season, which, as you might know, was free. So, bada boom, bada bing. Every month, we'll be talking to two designers, one young, just graduated or still a student just like us and the other episode is with some of the sickest illest realest killest i don't know what to say some of the craziest designers that we could possibly find and that were willing to take an hour of their busy schedule and share their knowledge and experience with us so each month both of these designers will be working on the same topic and for this month we chose toy design Today we're talking to someone who is designing toys for toddlers and is actually winning prizes with that. And next episode, which will come out in two weeks, will be with Jonathan Benning, who is the lead designer of LEGO. Like, for real, LEGO. So, without any further ado, as always, hope you learned something, but above all, hope that you enjoy. Hey, welcome to the second season of the Icarus Idea. You are listening to our first episode with a new host. Sadly, Jean has been replaced. We now have Jens. Woo! Hey there, okay. my name's Jens. Ca- Canada Hi. man. Woohoo! <laughs> Hype! Woohoo! <laughs> Alright. But apart from a new host, we of course also have a guest. And I think, Jens, you will do the introduction for our lovely guest today, right? I'd love to introduce our guest. Our guest today studied at the Amsterdam University of Applied Science, where she got a bachelor's degree in product design, cum laude, might I add. Very impressive indeed. Uh, She also studied uh, after that to become a uh, pre-master in industrial design at the Eindhoven University of Technology. And now she is a freelance industrial designer at Studio Van Klau. We're, of course, talking about Claudia Bleger. Welcome, Claudia. Hello. Hello. Wow, Welcome you did the. a the Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you did a lot of research about me. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the job. We have to stalk our guests. <laughs> you recently won a HEMA Design Contest Award uh, for your How You Stock You Set. Could you please explain a little bit uh, to the audience about what that actually is? The How You Stock You Set, yeah. It's uh, totally HEMA, a Dutch brand where simplicity is now i think the core of every product and this uh this product is like a little backpack and inside this backpack um there are 17 different uh construction elements and children from uh yeah the end of 3 years to 10 years they can um they can play with this construction elements by also using an adventure book. And in the adventure book, there are different stories and they can choose one of the stories and build their own adventure with the construction elements and everything what they can find in their own house. So like furniture or other stuff where it's not toy, but what, what, a, what a child can create like a toy. And then you have your own adventure. <laughs> it reminded me very much of like um, back when I was a little Joris and I wanted to like build huts in the house of my parents with anything like blankets, cushions, seats, couches, whatever, right? I feel like that's what it enables some sort of. Yeah, and a lot of people are recognized themselves in this product because they did it all when they were young. 
exactly. And now this this game what I made is like more a little stimulation, um, but yeah, their creativity of this child would be endless. And yeah, that's really really cool. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 synonymous with like stuff like Lego and Meccano and and those kind of things and when, when parents see those yeah. toys it's just it's timeless they they love love that amazing it's amazing that you that you designed yeah. something similar to that with with just very simple things and it's it's brilliant it is absolutely brilliant well worthy of the prize yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah but that was that was I think the most difficult part uh, because I made like this book with a lot of illustrations but the hardest part was to create an illustration what is not filled in already so it has if you if you see it now it's like a silhouette of a princess or a castle and that's it mm -hmm. um and that is why I also added a story so for Every page has its own adventure and it starts with a little story. And one of the stories is like, once upon a time, there was a pirate ship with a really, really big uh, boat. And then I started with a lot of questions. So are you a pirate and how do you look like? Oh, that's amazing. And well, except blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And the reason I put this question inside the story is to, to try to stimulate the brains of the, the child already before playing the product and that they are sketching something inside the head already. Think like, hmm, how should it look like? Hmm, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's that's really cool that, that the whole premise of that book is to be an instruction manual without limiting creativity. And I think yeah, that's, a, that's an amazing kind of yeah. thought behind making making a, a, a product with a, with a clear goal without limiting um, or, or defining the journey that the child has to take to get there. I think the clear goal is when they start playing yeah. inside their adventure. Aye, aye, aye. That was my goal. So I don't want to say that my product is a game because a game is something what you start and you will end. But this is endless, so it's not a game. <laughs> it's just a product, <laughs> an adventure product. I'm actually quite curious. You mentioned that you uh, you made the book yourself. You just showed us before we recorded this. Uh, you were showing us around your, let's say, workplace, where you were 3D printing the pegs that are in the bag. How much of this did you do yourself? Like how how much how much did you make yourself? I did everything by myself. Okay, so what is every? Well, that's, well, that's a, f a funny question. It was not something what I only did by myself, of course. Um, there was a child psychologist was uh, helping me by creating the stories uh, on the, uh, in this kind of way. Uh, there was another friend of me uh, who was helping by uh, creating the stamps on the back uh, because he has his own company with fabrics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And my mother, I'm not proud of it. Well, I'm a little bit proud of it. She made the back, so she was knitting okay. everything because I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you should be proud of that. <laughs> so, yeah, just so many people will give me or just only advice or yeah helping me uh creating the product but yeah the the prototypes uh and the the, the illustrations in the book uh is yeah all by myself and i think that is for me really really nice to do that it's not only um the modeling so not only creating these prototypes it's also doing this illustration part because i really like that too but not too much when you have this 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 creativity that you're talking about and not limiting anything um is that also one of the reasons why you became a freelance designer to not limit you know your creativity at one specific company but to just kind of work for different companies along the way or is there more to to why you became a freelance designer uh yes i i just had the feeling that i i did something what was unique and what 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 is unique I have the opportunity to work with different professionals like uh, pedagogues and teachers and uh, other people. And I think if you are in a company, you are, um, yeah, it, it, yeah, it depends which company you are, but uh, you are not 
so free to do what you wanted. And like, for example, this, this competition uh, for me was like a luxury position and that I won was amazing, but I could fill in everything by myself. Nobody was saying what to do. And if you are winning a prize like this in something what you really, really likes is, yeah, that is really amazing. And I, I also had the same feeling by creating my own company to put my passion in a product and and share it with other companies. Now, if you say that you could decide everything yourself, there were some guidelines from HEMA, right? Doesn't that feel like you still get some dictation of what can and can't be done, like by the, let's say, customer in this case? Yeah, but I think a collaboration with a company like this for me is like a merge because I feel the company, I love the company, I love the way they're working and their vision is the same as my vision. And I I found this thing, I recognize this in, in other collaborations I had before with different companies that you are there together and you are just talking about what you do and where you're standing for. And then the other one is like, yeah, but this is exactly what we do. Like we are creating analog products. So let the child uh, stimulate their own creativity by creating a game or a product. Yeah. And I think if you are finding this kind of companies or people, yeah, you can level up together. And that is something miracle, I think. Uh, I found that very striking because I feel like a lot of conversations that we've had also in our first season and we will have the next episode as well. This, this is also a subject that comes across. Um, this like, um, if you want to cooperate or if you want to do something together, it's not as much about the product itself that you're going to make, but you have to, let's say, connect on a, I don't know what the word is, maybe personal or on a higher level. A little bit emotional, yeah. I think, too. The, the, this is what you mentioned between my vision is their vision. That's, that's the important part if you want to collaborate with someone, I think. You tested the, the, the how you touch you, uh, let's say toy, not game, because it's not a game. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you tested that extensively. You also went for this, um, let's say touch related toy. Um, to elementary schools, like how do you find, let's say, test subjects? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not scared for people, and I always just ask people around me to help me. Uh -huh. I think it's a really important strength to has have it as a designer, just to trust people around you and just say, "Can you please help me?" By I don't know what. And also you, like for the HEMA project, there were so many people helping me and it, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it was amazing. Um, but yeah, I think I just ask friends and they ask other friends and I used Facebook groups to just put it on teacher groups like, hello, can I please test? And at one point I just went to, I just called elementary schools and said, and then I use also always my lovely, cute voice and it's always working. <laughs> Damn, I don't have that. <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> I do agree with you. Have a good though. smile. <laughs> I do agree with you, though. The, you, like the, the act of just asking people and just calling people is it's just it's so, so useful. It, it helps us with like half of the mm -hmm. guests that we get for the podcast. Or you, you contacted us, mm -hmm. but with the, let's say, the um, established, um, the established designers that we ask for our podcast, we just write them on LinkedIn or we just call their office and we're like, hey, uh, we have a podcast. Do you want to be on it? And it just it's works so well. Effective. Everyone, yeah. basically everyone says yes. It's, it's the same yeah, as what you say. Yeah. Yeah, just just do it. And there are so many people just don't like it, but just go for your goal. And uh, and, and also, if you have a good story, people will recognize it. It is kind of scary, though, calling. Uh, it is, yeah, I understand why a lot of people <laughs> don't do it, because it's, it's super scary to, I don't know, 
call the office of the Lego designer and be like, hello, yeah. <laughs> we're, an, uh, we're a podcast. <laughs> Do you want to join? <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? Who are you? <laughs> if you really want something, just go. And maybe now it's not like the best moment to go to all these offices. Mm. Mm. But yeah, <laughs> just show your energy and go for it. But but yeah, you have to have a good story, not stay there and say hello. Uh, yeah, so I want this job. Why do you want to have this job? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. You know. That's where the the yeah. the my vision is your vision comes in again. I think. So first be I think so, first yeah. be ballsy yeah. enough to walk up to their office, or maybe just call them. Maybe I think calling works quite fine as well but if you're bossy enough walk into their <laughs> office and then make sure that you have the your vision is my vision and that's why i want to work for you story clear yeah all right shia labeouf was right all along just just do it don't let your just dreams be it. dreams <laughs> <laughs> claudia you you worked with a lot of people um or a lot of uh, children who have learning disabilities like autism and, and like and uh, on Instagram, you're very open about your dyslexia. How does that impact your work? And <laughs> uh, what advice do you would you give to people who have the same learning disability? It's really, really funny that my old study uh, at the Amsterdam University of Applied Science, and I, I did product design, that was the name, everybody was dyslexic. Really? Yeah. yeah. And that was so funny to see. And if we we had to also write a lot of papers, um, and that was the most horrible part for everybody, <laughs> I think. But I think that's also the most horrible part for non-dyslectic people. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, and I think I don't know how it's working, but um, I think that that. Like if you are creative, you are using a different part of your brains. And uh, sometimes it's also um, adding, yeah, you also ha has dyslexia. And for me, it was really, really, it is really hard to, um, to, yeah, to struggle with this. Um, yeah, I think also here I found out that, that my strength was not all this, research and research and research but just to do the trial and error and to just start making and start creating and that was what I was uh, what I was really missing during the pre-master I just thought but where are all my markers and pencils and mm -hmm. and things to to just create I had a I had a um a question prepared actually mm -hmm. um, uh -oh. a, a while ago I had a conversation with a uh, design bureau called the asylum and there I had a just like we're talking to you right now I had a conversation with their design director Kara Ang and she told me that in order to get going as a company uh, they participated in some contests so they wanted to get some traction, you know, to maybe win some prizes. And then you can say, well, I want this prize. I want that prize. So you just, just to get going, you know? Um, and I was wondering, is that for you, uh, uh, also a reason that you joined the HEMA design contest or is it different? Yeah. Also, I thought like a nomination in, on your CV is amazing to have. Hmm. Yeah, and then if you are the winner, it's much better to put it on your CV, I think. <laughs> but also, yeah, I think I, I entered this, this competition five years ago also uh, with another pro project, Beertje Bengel, it calls a really cute little bag for children. And um, yeah, I, reckon I, I, I really, really liked the competition and I thought, okay, if this competition will be there again, I am going for it. Uh, hundred percent, but at that moment I was working for this uh, for this other company, and um, yeah, I was really missing the product design part, and I think that was the biggest reason I entered this um, this competition that I could 
uh, yeah, could go in research again and could go to the families and, and ask them questions about how it is to have children and what is going around and are there any problems and yeah just going into this process again yeah so i think that's the biggest reason to enter but yeah it's also amazing to um to have it on your cv but i think it's that was not the, the the biggest reason and i really i really like it to maybe work for hema uh for yeah for the company yeah but that's actually something else that i wondered about you you participated in this in this contest and i saw on the website of the contest that um you actually don't get a financial compensation if you win but I was wondering, like, how much do you have to give up to HEMA? And how much did you, let's say, gain from it? So this week I'm going in a call with them and we are going to discuss the, yeah, the uh, production of the product. I'm really curious what they are going to say and how um, strict they will be by saying, like, this is our product now or that they give me still this space but yeah i think that i was nominated the moment i was nominated it was an a chance for me to open myself to the world or to the companies i knew already and to create a promotion video what uh, was made by Evert wissing such a good editor and photographer and video maker and Avert said to me, you really have to create like a really small video, just 10 seconds, what you can put on Instagram, Facebook, I don't know what more, to collect votes for your game. Because, uh, product, sorry. Mm. Uh, <laughs> because, that was uh, close. There were, <laughs> there were two prizes. You had the, the, the uh, jury prize and the public prize. And public prize for was uh, the one who won with the most of the fo votes. But I thought like, I'm creating an offline game and now I have to go online to <laughs> create, to win this game. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but on the end I was just, yeah, my, my friend said to me, let's do this. And then I created this amazing promotion video. I don't know if you saw it yes. from my Instagram, yeah, Facebook, amazing. LinkedIn, we, we did, whatever. It, is it was actually, it looks very professional. Yeah, but Evert is oh, he's such an amazing guy. Um, uh, and also with making this video, because um, it was in my backyard and he, uh, Evert just took all these instruments because he has all these well, cameras and stuff, but also this yellow curtain, what was the background? He just bought it for me. I don't know, but oh, so, so lovely. And then this neighbor children were my actors so they were climbing over the the hatch i think the hatch and they were going over it and then they saw this really big setting of filming mm -hmm. place and then they saw these costumes because i i created all these costumes for them and they were hanging there with their names on it to give them the feeling if they were really actors <laughs> and then Avert just talked to them and say hey hello I'm Avert and then Avert start playing with one of the guys and start um, fighting and um, yeah it was so good to see how this interaction also with him uh, and me and and the children was this day and everything I just made a little script but yeah everything was so not planned it was so chaotic and everything was not what i wanted but yeah it just ended out in an amazing video um but go back to the point i um i'm so happy that i made it this video because yeah so many i had so many views and yeah i can create something what i made and yeah to use this video by showing your work that's yeah that was something what hema give me i think a little bit yeah and now i won and now it's just yeah, also a lot of publication i don't know if the name is that publication so that is for a young designer a dream to have i think and also in this um in this year of corona and difficult to find a job i think i can be really happy <laughs> <laughs> 
um yeah so i was not doing it for the money i just get like a little amount of money but yeah i i put so many money in inside the project already so yeah it's there is not a lot of left <laughs> so it's something to be very proud of thank you <laughs> i'm really proud of my neighbor children they're <laughs> the best the day i won i the first thing i did was just <laughs> going to them and I was ringing the door and they, the father came to me and he opened the door and I was standing there with this big board with this big amount and that I won and, and this big flowers and I, I had this in my hand and then, and then I was standing there and I said like, I won! <laughs> and I had to cry and to laugh and, <laughs> and, then, okay. and then his children came and this girl was wearing this mermaid outfit and she was just jumping and running and jumping and running she was just so happy <laughs> it was so cute crazy <laughs> oh, and then uh, the other boy I asked them like how, how is it to be famous now and the boy said well, today on my elementary school, yeah, I liked it because there were so many girls running after me. What a Gino. I think we're getting really close to the time limit. But one of the last questions I had was, what would be your advice to students, um, current industrial design students who want to be where you are? What would your advice be? Um, well, it takes a while to find your strengths as a designer. I think it's not something which you immediately can find. Yeah, it's being a designer is really fragile uh, and a search to find out what your strengths are and you also meet your weaknesses. weaknesses. Um, and maybe you, uh, you, you will not find it yeah straight away in one company for example for me um but i think it's a power if you can think in a way like this and you will collect these strengths all the time and you will build yourself as an yeah independent designer with a story and what makes you different than the other designer yeah and yeah it sounds really cliche but i think just believe in yourself and just if you really 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 want something do it, do it, do it, go for it, go for it, go for it. Walking through the boss's office. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, um, well, I think a lot of topics such as the your vision is my vision, the, 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 the struggle to find your own strengths and how to cope with that will actually uh, coincidentally, honestly coincidentally, also talk about that in the next episode, which will be online in two weeks, so be sure to check that um, but for now, nice. Claudia um, thank you very much for and your thank time, you so much for, joining us. for your stories for everything, thank you you guys, it was amazing, no problem and to uh, you, you listening let us know what you learned from Claudia today let us know what you thought of the episode. If you have any tips, any tricks, any comments, let us know. Also, you can you can put them on YouTube in the comments or you can write us on Instagram. You know our Instagram is the Icarus idea. So just give that a look up if you want to let us know anything. And maybe you have a new idea for toys. Just oh. text me too. Oh, <laughs> studi Studio Van Klau at Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Yay! Just send her some random, uh, let's say, toy ideas. <laughs> we'll plug her links in yes, the description. Do it. We'll plug do it her all. links. Free to do it. That's the goal of the Icarus idea. We just want to learn. So actually, you just proven the whole goal of this podcast. 
So with that being said, I thought the whole goal of the podcast was to make it really hard for Brum to edit, because that's what we're doing right now. Because it's we've recorded an intro and it's five minutes and eleven seconds long. Are we already like <laughs> five minutes. Oh, we're actually five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Brum wants to fire um, us, and I agree. I agree. Yeah. Sorry, what's this? Say? 